Well, thanks to all of you for coming out to our service this morning, and I pray that the rest of this Christmas day is wonderful for each and every one of you. Not so fast, preacher man. Behold, it is I, Horus, Egyptian god of the sun, and while you all believe that you've been celebrating the birth of your Lord Jesus, you've really been celebrating the birth of me. For you see, thousands of years before your Jesus came around, I, Horus, was born on December 25th. I, Horus, was born of a virgin. I, Horus, was baptized by a man called Arnold the Baptizer, was crucified and was resurrected three days later. So you see, your Jesus is nothing more than plagiarized poppycock, and I, Horus, have come to feast upon the sorrow of you foolish Christians. Yeah, none of the stuff you just said is true. Yes, it is. No, there's no reference in Egyptian mythology to Horus being crucified or resurrected three days later. There's no documentation anywhere for the existence of a figure named Anup the Baptizer. Horus' his mother was not a virgin woman, but the goddess Isis. And there is no specific date anywhere tied to the birth of Horus. I'm pretty sure there is. Actually, no. All of these claims and many others indicating that early Christians yoinked the mythology of Horus and stuck it on top of Jesus were all completely made up by Gerald Massey, a 19th century cuckoo banana bird self-taught Egyptologist who never provided the slightest shred of evidence for any of these claims and who was laughed out of the room by every serious Egyptologist on the planet. So thank you very much for your attempt to ruin our celebration of Christ's birth, but I'm afraid we're all still having a very Merry Christmas. Miss Horace. Horace? Did I say my name was Horace? No, no, no. What I meant to say was, Behold, it is I, Mithras, Roman cultic god of the something something, and while you all believe that you've been celebrating the birth of Jesus, you've really been celebrating the birth of me. For you see, I, Mithras, was born of a virgin. I, Mithras, had twelve disciples, and I, Mithras, gave those disciples a meal consisting of my body and my blood. Sound familiar, Christian dummies? Actually, Mithras was born from a rock, not of a virgin. He had two companions, not twelve disciples, and the Mithraic meal was one he shared with the sun god where they feasted not on his own flesh, but on the flesh of a bull. But even if those claims were true, Christians were already confessing the virgin birth, recognizing the twelve apostles, and celebrating the Lord's Supper before they ever encountered any Mithraic cults. So I'm afraid that you've taken neither the holly nor the jolly out of our Christmas, Mithras. Oh, you must have misheard me. I I'm not Mithras. I'm, uh, Quetzalcoatl, Aztec god of the wind. And Valuol thinks that you've been... No Christian on the face of the planet ever heard of Quetzalcoatl until the 16th century. Well, then I'm... Balder, Norse god of the... There were 193 popes before Balder's mythology was actually written down. Then I'm Horus, Egyptian god of the sun. You already did that one. All right, fine. I didn't want to completely humiliate you, but you've left me no choice. I shall now unveil myself to be the ancient deity whose mythology was inarguably stolen by early Christians. Behold, I am... The ancient Mesopotamian god of judgment. Six thousand years before your Jesus spoke of returning to condemn the lost and resurrect the faithful, my followers proclaimed that I would return to destroy my enemies and raise the dead. So silence your joyful voices, Christians. Your Lord is nothing but a cheap carbon copy of me, the destructor who goes by many names. I am Volguis Zildroha. I am Lord of the Sibulia. I am Gozer the Gozerian. Gozer the Gozerian is from Ghostbusters. Dang it, why do so many people still know that movie? Sing with joyous all together. I don't understand. If all the things that Gerald Massey said about me were complete fabrications, with no textual evidence whatsoever, why do atheists like Bill Maher reference these claims as if they were true? Well, Horace, I suppose it is strange that people who insist that they won't believe anything without verifiable evidence are more than willing to believe anything without verifiable evidence as long as that thing can be used to mock the gospel. But we shouldn't be surprised when people reject proof of Christ's resurrection in favor of demonstrable lies that let them remain in unbelief. After all, Jesus did say, if they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced if someone should rise from the dead. I said that before Jesus did. Oh, you absolutely did not! Jesus of the wind and wind.